I'm going to talk about lumbar stenosis or a neurogenic claudication. Uh, this is caused by a narrowing of the spinal canal in the lumbar spine and that causes the nerves to be compressed. Mostly this happens in older patients uh, between the fifth to seventh decade of life. Uh, the most common location that this happens at is the L4, L5 level, but it can be at the L3, L4 followed by the L2, L3 level as well. It's common to have more than one level of uh, spinal stenosis. There are different causes for it. Uh, the most common cause is uh, degeneration of the lumbar spine. And when the degeneration happens, uh, what we see is that uh, you can have a disc bulge in the front, seen here. You can have thickening of the ligament in the back, which I'm highlighting. And then you can also have uh, enlargement or hypertrophy of the facet joints here and the combination of all these three things becoming big can cause stenosis which is narrowing of the canal uh, it can also be seen in patients with congenital stenosis so patients who are born with less space of the spinal canal uh, and it's common in in patients who have achondroplasia or dwarfs because again their distance of their pedicles is small causing the stenosis to happen. Typically patients will present with lower back pain, so they'll say they have pain in the lower back, which then goes down their legs on both sides. It can also be just on one side. Uh, usually it's worse with walking. Uh, it is worse with extension of the back, but it gets better if they lean forward. So often patients will describe that uh, they have this pain which is worse with walking but gets better when they lean forward or better when they sit down. Sometimes they also describe this as a feeling of numbness or heaviness in their legs and they'll often say that when they go for grocery shopping they lean on the shopping cart and that makes their symptoms better or they can walk longer if they lean on something. The distribution of the pain again uh, depends on the nerve that's being compressed. So the symptoms will be different based on L1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Uh, typically, L1 pain will be higher up in the groin or in the upper, lump, upper thigh. L2 will be a bit more in the middle of the thigh. L3 will be again in the front of the thigh, a bit more uh, lower down. Uh, L4 can be pain in the front of the thigh, but also going towards the shin. And then patients who have pain in the L5 distribution will typically have pain in the back of the thigh, going towards the outer calf and towards the top of the foot. The patients who have pain in S1 will have pain going towards the back of the thigh again, going towards the back of the calf and towards the bottom of the foot and the outer side of the foot. It's important to differentiate uh, neurogenic claudication, that is because of spinal stenosis, from vascular claudication which is because of a peripheral vascular disease. So the key difference between the two is that for neurogenic claudication, uh, symptoms are related to position of their back. Whereas in vascular claudication, symptoms are related to moving the legs. So uh, patients with both, with, with both conditions will have pain, which is worse with walking. Uh, with patients who have neurogenic claudication, if they sit on a bike, and write that typically they will have less symptoms compared to those who have vascular claudication because even though they're bent forward, they're still moving their legs. So their vascular uh, uh, patients who have vascular problems will have symptoms. Uh, walking uphill is, is a good way to differentiate patients with neurogenic claudication. If they walk uphill, they're gonna bend their back so they will feel less pain, but the patients with vascular claudication will still have pain walking uphill. Uh, neurogenic claudication is better when they lean forward, it's better if they're sitting, uh, and it's uh, better uh, if they lean on something. Patients who have vascular claudication, uh, they have to stop and stand in a position uh, for the pain to improve. They typically will have uh, poor pulses in the lower extremities, and they can also have shiny shins or, or lo loss of hair because of poor vascularity in their legs. So that's an important way to differentiate neurogenic claudication from vascular claudication.